Hello, I'm Professor Birdwell, and we're going to be talking about perspective in this visual module. As a quick refresher, we're showing you here the oblique view and an isometric view of our toy truck body. Just as a refresher, we're going to be building off of these for our one-point perspective and for our two-point perspective in today's video module. Hi, I'm Professor Speck. Uh, what I have uh, here for you, uh, uh, once again, is uh, a, an orthographic drawing. Uh, uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, there is a new element in here called a horizon line, which I shall just simply label A. All right? Uh, now, depending on where you place the object above or below, it depends on what portions or, or planes of the object you'll see. When it's below the line, you're going to see more of the top and the front. When it's above, you'll see the, 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 the front and the bottom, some of the side. So it's a way of manipulating the drawing to take a view to show a viewer details uh, in the bottom, back, front, top, or bottom. And again, we're showing you here the below and above vantage point of the oblique drawing. And we're now going to show you how to do this with the one point perspective first. OK, now what I've done here is I've taken the uh, true side view of the uh, uh, multi-view drawing, uh, just as I did in the oblique. But in this case now, I've drawn in a horizon line, which I've marked as H. And I'm going to put in a perspective vanishing point. Vanishing points are uh, very simply railroad tracks that disappear in the distance, uh, or hallways that disappear in the distance. Let me show you. Here's what happens. From every vertex, this is the front this will describe a front edge of the plane. I go out. All right. So as you can see, I can begin. In our oblique drawing, all those lines extended at 45 degrees. But in perspective, all of those lines are going to extend to the vanishing point. Now you're going to choose the placement of that vanishing point, but it will always be on the horizon line. But you can choose where on the horizon line it will occur. OK. However, you're not able really to, to dimension where this uh, uh, front plane for the front of the truck, it, it's, it's called eyeball. You eyeball it, it looks about right. I'll draw a vertical line, and this parallel and vertical at the same time, all right? So here I can then draw the front plane in perspective. Now, as you can see, the front edge is smaller than the rear edge. Again. Parallel lines, parallel lines. Done that. Okay, I've got a windshield that's slanted. It should be parallel. Okay, that intersection with this vanishing point from that vertex gives me that. And we might have just said that backwards, but things that are in the distance will be smaller than that which is in the foreground. Just like if you were standing further away, you will look smaller. You're not actually going to get smaller. And then there are details like wheel wells. And you say, well, is the wheel well is about that deep. OK. Uh, uh, once again, there's a line. There's a line. That's the back of the wheel well. Well, it'll echo this same shape. So this has got to come up and do this. OK. Same for uh, our, our, our little window, which happens to be round. And uh, you would build that and, uh, and construct it in a, a square. But what's important is the vanishing line from this point on the leading edge back. And it's only about that deep. OK. Well, I can't quite see it here, but it'd be about here. So I can, I can simply say, well, this is about what it looks like. OK. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Suddenly, uh, this is a much more realistic looking view than you would ordinarily expect to see in either an oblique, certainly, and uh, possibly uh, an isometric. Now, we said that you can choose the placement of the vanishing point on the horizon line. And likewise, you can choose the placement of your drawing with relation to the horizon line itself. So we're going to show you briefly what it'll look like if you were to draw the 
uh, object above the horizon lines. We're going to sketch in a couple of vanishing lines to this top object above. Okay, here we go. You find the vertex, draw the line. The process is going to be just the same. Everything goes to a vanishing point. And yeah. if we were to finish that off. That's essentially what you'll see, just like that, OK? So it's clear that you can adjust how uh, things are viewed. Depending, if I really wanted to see almost more of the bottom than the side, I would move that uh, horizon line way down here someplace. And of course, the point's carrying down. So if I view it like this, that line then is way down here. I start looking at more of the bottom than the side. So you're in control of that. Uh, but let me re uh, reiterate again that uh, that ordinarily is not something uh, as a, uh, a, an engineer is going to use as a drawing tool. And now we're going to show you what the two-point perspective looks like. So let's clear this out. Okay, I have uh, drawn in a, a horizon line again. I'll mark it with H. There's a vanishing point. And then uh, somewhat out of the picture, let me just slide this over a bit. Uh, you'll see I have a point over here. You're not going to be able to see that. That's characteristic of, of uh, perspective drawings more times than not. That point may be very far away indeed. And here I raised a line uh, that uh, represents the front leading edge of the construction box into which I want to make the drawing, okay? Now let me remind you, here's a construction box for an isometric. And here's the front leading edge of that box. Here's the front leading edge of that box. This is arbitrary. Uh, and let me just connect both of these top and bottom vertexes with. So as Professor Specht is now building his construction box in the two-point perspective drawing, I'm going to mention that just like in the one-point perspective, all of your vertices are going to extend to a vanishing point. Only now we have two vanishing points. So it will have one side going off to the right-hand vanishing point, and we'll have the left hand going off to the left hand vanishing point, vanishing point two. So now you can see that I have the two front panels or planes that I visible panels and planes of that box. Now I I know that uh, the leading edge of the, the the hood of this truck is somewhere in here. I can I can do that by inspecting it a drawing or simply deciding that's where I want it to be. And I draw another line. Again, well, that line's going out to the vanishing point. Okay, well, uh, and it also goes back. Let's see what the top plane of the hood looks like. The vanishing point, that's going back there somewhat. And I'm going to say that, that that's about, about that deep visually. Another vanishing point. Well, the vanishing points and the lines tell you where the intersections will be. Here's, here's the vertex. There's the top plane of, of, of the truck, OK? I'll heavy that up just so that it's really evident. All right. And that's the top plane of the hood of the truck. The hood of the truck, right. Uh, now I've got a windshield that's slanted something like that. Well, how do I know where that goes? Again, up to the vertex, back like this. Okay, now parallel line, parallel line. Here's the far corner of that windshield, all right? And you can see uh, I have very quickly blocked out the, the major overall dimensions of the truck body. Well, I've got details, so uh, just like I have details in terms of, of the uh, 
isometric and the oblique, how do I put those in? Well, you follow much the same thing in using the same construction methodology. Uh, let's say here is, uh, uh, here are a couple of axle points. Let's just start with, with that. That's the axle point of a wheel. Let's say this is an axle point of the wheel, all right? Well, I know just by inspection of the drawing that uh, the wheel's not going to be any higher than that, so I'll draw a line there. I'm going to take an equal distance down here. I'm going to draw up that. I'm now going to make <coughs> a complete square out of, out of uh, these two lines, all right? Remember, this process is the same. While Professor Specht is doing it, I'll, uh, I'll commentate through. So the process is the same for a true square, a uh, front view, orthographic, or for the isometric square, if you're making a circle in an isometric plane, you're going to make the square, you're going to bisect both sides, you're going to make your diagonals. You know your circle is going to touch tangent at four points that will mark on the square, and that will also touch four points on the diagonals. We'll mark those, and then you're going to sketch in the rough shape of the circle touching all eight of those points. So here are the four tangents to the square, as well as the 80% points on the diagonals. And then you sketch in the rough shape of the circle. Once you get the rough shape of the circle, then you can go and tidy it up. The only difference here in the perspective is that as we proceed towards the vanishing point, the circles will get a little bit smaller. So our rear wheel will look a little smaller than our front wheel, and our perspective box is actually slightly smaller in the back than it is in the front. But the process for construction is the same. Right. So uh, uh, you can see immediately uh, uh, that uh, this is much closer to the kind of thing you might see in terms of a photograph. And we're not going to cover it in this module, but it's just worth mentioning you can have a three-point perspective where that third vanishing point will be off the horizon line somewhere. This is very commonly used in architectural drawings. If you're using tall buildings, for instance, that third vanishing point will be off the horizon line. So you have two on and one off the horizon line. We're not going to cover that here, but just we'll make note of it. Right. All right, thank you, and this concludes the perspective video module.